again. That's why I'm using a mask until I finish. I mean, like finish with this masking process. So like. So masking yeah. is just like to make sure in case you make mistakes or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah a, I think it's a better method instead of like you don't use mask directly deleting it from the photo. Then you have to control Z everything and that is, is a bit risky though, for me. Let's just remove here. I think. Okay. I will say, okay, this part is the one that is. What is that? Okay, because sometimes you have this situation that you don't know what is there, right? It's better that let's just review the original photo. So that thing is actually part of the sky, so I should remove that. Okay, now I think we already removed everything that is very close to that area. We can just use lasso two to quickly remove. Okay, now we have this layer which is masked away. I think it's okay. I think here is a bit. Should we add this part? Save. Okay, after you've be done rating, right? We can actually double check. Okay, I missed out one area. Which is this one. After we done with it, you can keep this mask or you can just like apply it, but I think I will just apply the mask for like Thing. Okay, this is the uh, one of the steps that removing the background because we want to repaint our sky or everything like that. Sometimes we might also want to do color adjustment for this photo layer because here right the photo is very the color is much more dull or everything like that. But color grading is a very big I mean like there is a lot of topic and tutorial out there. You can also check like color grading for for movies and then for videos, I think it works roughly the same. So you can check all this tutorial about using curve, using levels, or anything like that. But the fast, the easiest way you can do it, right? I mean, like we can just put an, let's just quickly put an vibrance filter. I think this one is making it much more vibrant. So it's more vibrance, saturation, saturation, okay, the diff difference between saturation and vibrance right if i'm not mistaken saturation will if you do saturation right you will go over saturate you see right the color is very very i don't know what's saturate i guess full of color but, yeah if you do vibrance right you won't go i mean i like go the value won't go too much i don't know how to explain it better but the difference is that so like you just tend to i, I tend to use vibrance more see right Maybe this okay. I'm colorblind, so I'm I have to apologize if I do everything too saturate because I tend to see stuff less saturate. I'm a red green colorblind. Maybe you just apply this thing. I think it should be okay. See, I think I just made a mistake. It was a bit transparent here, but never mind. So just select this two layer, control E to apply the mask. So, Okay. okay, let's paint the sky. I usually organize my photo, my project Photoshop like nicely. Like I don't like 
with a lot of layers or thing like that. I separate them by elements. Like maybe this one's the main main thing, right? Main subject. So I just like we can just put it as main. Main main so main. It's up to you, but I tend to name it in a way that I like. And then this one is a sky, right? So I just put BG. This one is sky. Okay, for Skyra, I think we're just going to do a morning or afternoon colors. So you might be wondering how do we pick colors or anything like that. So as a color blind, I can't really give you a lot of advice. But the first thing, right, I want to suggest everyone to use is actually this HSP, the hue, saturation, and brightness panel instead of like the RGB slider. Because I think by default it's in RGB, so you just change with this HSB. With this, right, we can choose our color easier. Why? Because here, right, is the color, like which type yellow. You can see, right, quickly know what color we are using. Like here is like red, orange, yellow, green. And then here is like the cyan, blue, purple, pink, and red. So it's very easy to know what color we are using. And then, like, we can also like control, like, maybe we are using a uh, blue. How separate the blue should be. It's like we just control this slider and how bright and then how dark the uh, blue should be. Because if compared with RGB, right, how do we control that? Like where is the yellow? I, I know yellow is red plus green, but how to desaturate this yellow or thing like that? It's very hard to control using this panel. So I suggest using this panel HSB. It's much more easier to pick your color. So back to the sky and then how regarding color, how do we choose color? It's like the first thing first that you can always like use reference. And then like by using reference online, right? You will sort of like slowly pick up, build up some kind of like you know what is a good color to use. Like let's say just quickly, I mean I use my own color. You can Google any photo or right? use use color photo, but I'm just gonna use my own. Okay, I like this very light blue. Let's put it here. Okay, reference, reference. Okay, just view, view. For starting out, right, you can do this. Like, you just pick color and then you can see, okay, this blue is in here. The saturation is like this. And then like, you sort of like, the more you do right, the next time you won't even need this image anymore because you already remember, oh, it's always in this range and then you can just do this color. Okay. Any questions so far? So to paint right, I usually just like fill it the whole sky with that color. So it's too dark. And then use this as brush, soft round brush. You can sort of like, we can sort of like paint the gradient for the sky, it's maybe lighter. I think this is a bit too, should be a bit brighter. On the screen, yeah, the better. Was that one huge sky just now on that picture? You used that one uh, cloud brush to do, like, yeah. and then like you change the tone, so like you have some of it become lighter. Uh, darker yeah. or yeah. use yeah. it all in oh, okay. I'll be showing you all the, how to do clouds like this. Oh yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay, to do clouds like that, right? Because I think my contrast is a bit problem in this. Let me just put back this. Okay, to do clouds like that, right? We there's two methods I usually use. One is I use a round brush. I just paint everything manually. The other one, I use sort of like a brush that is a cloud brush that I create. But let's make another layer first, this cloud. And then I choose like white color. I just now I mentioned I like to use, uh, I mean like a solid color, right? For before I do the shading. So this is the cloud brush that I use. You can do that. I mean like for, I just like roughly paint a shape and then I do the shading later. Oh. You can, I mean, like, you can use a round brush with a bit of setting like this. 
I explained just now a size jitter, I think less scattering is the same option as the leaf brush we made just now. Or you can just like roughly draw the shape that we want. I mean like please. Sorry. Okay, let's do it here. Now the I mean like if we go to paint manually right the detail of this brush is not that great yet, so we have to go in and refine the the silhouette this brush. I mean this cloud. So I noticed that you use like a pure white color for the sky, but like the edges somewhere around it is not mm. like entirely white also. Is it because like the opacity or like Yeah, this is the opacity because this brush I'm using right there is a bit of like flow jitter thing that Oh, okay, so, uh, yeah. then I see. So let me show you, like, you have to, I mean, like, if we're going to use a round brush to paint, right, we have to, like, we have this extra step that we have to make sure the shape is, like, I mean, like, obviously a cloud doesn't look like that. We have to, like, add in all these minor details, smaller details. And then, like, you, I usually do this, uh, like, you just, so the shape is usually like that, you know, right? You have this shape. It's not like a round shape like that. So you have it's a very long process to do that thing. How would you say like the real basic shape of a cloud actually is? Is it just like a bunch of circles just around? Uh, like the cloud is depend on your which angle you're viewing the cloud and then the type of clouds. Like all this, like this, all this big cloud that we usually see in anime, right? I think they call it the Summer cumulus cloud, or something, cumulus like cloud or something. Yeah, you you can quickly like types of cloud. I think I have written a tutorial on that. Yep, you can see right. This is the cumulus cloud, and then like this smaller one, I think it's called the cirrus or something. So like you can roughly based on this. But I have, I think I have. You can read a bit. On that is a very old written tutorial, which I show you all how to do the thing. Yeah, it's a lot. Like all this, like how you. Okay. Now, see right. It's a very long process to adjust this cloud shape. That's why just now I say is sometimes it's much more better that we just create the brush with a custom brush which instantly the result is way much more better. See right, it's like, oh, it's already, although it's a bit repetitive, but let's just, okay, I'll just move. This one, I think I, I will, I will compile in the brush for you all later. I think this brush is in the, in the zip that I compiled last time. Yeah, this one is, this one is quite useful. It's a photo I took myself, I think. Okay, it's a bit weird the shape, right? But never mind, it's like, I don't think we have a lot of time. So I like, just quickly do something. So, never mind, okay. So, not nice. I think even with custom brush, right, we still have to play with. Okay, never mind. We just stop here because we don't have a lot of time. Let's rename it as cloud. We did the last one, which we draw, and then click here, lock, so that when we paint, right, we doesn't paint for that, right? I here, I think. Okay. So when we do our shading, right, we doesn't paint to the layer below. So you can either use back this cloud brush to do the set shading. I mean, choose this color like that, right? Or you can use any, I mean, any brush that you like. Uh, like you can use this circle brush as well. Circle brush. But before that, right, I tend to even already lock this layer, right? I lock this layer. I tend to use a clipping mask for this step. So you just add another layer and then you create a clipping mask, which is roughly the same. It's already masked, so like when we paint, right? Let's say we choose a red color. See, it's only paint inside this area. So just choose to shading, right? I usually pre-pick the color from the sky. And then just paint a bit here because now it's the same values, right? 
So why I use another layer is because I can adjust from here, like how dark or how the colors are. So just quickly, maybe I think it's the wrong direction, the shadow, because basing on photo, right? If you look at this area, right? The shadow is here, so maybe we should put in this area instead. Let's quickly put here. And you can delete. That's why I'm using the year so you can add the thing that we want. Maybe here or something. Okay, the other step now we after we have this right we can actually like use this smudge tool so for the smudge tool right we can smudge around the edges so i will be using this round brush again with the rush setting right is a very you can adjust this hardness so that the edge is not that hard is much more soft and then i have this scattering and everything like that so when we smudge right you sort of like do the blending see do the blending or we can just like merge it down first and then smash thing. Alright, maybe here you will see the difference more. Here. I think because here the cloud is a bit transparent, you see right? Maybe we have to to pick it the layers a bit. Okay. Now the other thing is like adding small details. Adding small details are we using the same round brush, which is here. You can just add another layer. I don't really like to directly edit on the cloud we have because like when we make mistake right you cannot be changed. So that's why I always add another layer first. So you can just pick color anyway here. So maybe I want to add a bit of white line here. Again. So the other thing is that what you can do is always here. So to pick color is like alternate in brush mode, right? You we press alternate so right you can just like copy here. It's a long process, but it's roughly something like that. Here is the shape is not very nice because I think I noticed a lot of people tend to paint in a very angular thing. So it should be because sometimes I also make the mistake. It should be much more round. It should be much more round like that. So let's just fix that. Okay. It's the same thing again. We can just like merge this now. Control E and then like smash the thing again. Adding the smash. Okay. We have our first, I mean, like obviously if we have to add another darker shade, create creeping mask, maybe this one, I think, let's try, maybe here.
still can follow what I'm doing, right? This one, the process is a bit long, but maybe it will stop in a while, like continue so. Do you also sometimes use like layers, like multiply layers or like different sort of layer types uh, to do this process? For me, I don't use layer blending, layer blending for this type of process. My process is actually just like using this clipping mask and then just paint. I don't use the blending mode. Oh, you just only adjust the opacity. Yeah. And... yeah. Okay, I see. I mean, like if you feel that you are much more comfortable using the blending mode, you can try that. So like, because there's no right or correct way to do that. But you roughly get the idea is, is the process is a bit long here, but I don't think I'm just, I think I can just skip read. Why is it the same thing? Okay. But it's roughly like that process. I think it could be better, but it's like rushing on. I don't want to spend too much time. Okay, so now this one is the main part. Like, usually you can add a smaller cup around it. Maybe choose this color, small cup. Put it here because this part is under shadow, right? So I guess it should be smaller. I feel like I think. I feel like the cloud is like a, a thing. I don't know how to describe a Mickey Mouse. <laughs> a Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I feel like... Yeah, I think because... I feel the, like the cloud the looks mouse. like a Mickey Mouse. <laughs> the, I think it's because the main shape that we didn't like do the, the whole silhouette better just now. So like, yeah. But basically, it's like after we have this main cloud, right? We just like continue to do all this small how with this round brush that you can just like put it around I think I have yep or we can use the brush that we create just now which is this one like it's up to you like maybe you want to have a better one right it's the same thing it's a process so now we have the I mean like the idea of like painting clouds which is that why is yeah. How do we, if we haven't touched our photo yet, how do we change, adjust the photo? I think it's a bit dumb, I think. have to adjust the brightness a bit. I can't really see it's better turn on. Okay, to paint on the photo right, you just delete this thing. There's two main areas that we have to paint on the photo, which is obviously just already, it's not already before the recording, I already removed a sign. If someone dropped like this one, already removed that. We have to remove that. And then the first thing first that we can do is actually, I mean, like we just, it's the same as painting. Like we can just like choose a color and then like we just paint a bit here. So like it's all of like removing which part that looks like photo because like sometimes photo right, you see where you have like this moist thing. You might want to remove it if you are hardworking. You can repaint the whole thing, but I tend to be very lazy and then I don't go through everything. Like here, right, you can just choose the color and then just paint, paint, and then paint. Here you can see right the shadow is very medium a bit. It's very a lot of color noise or anything, right? you can just choose and then you can just paint. So right, like, sort of like remove that thing that gave away the photo. Okay, this is the first thing right like paint, right? The four paintings and just I'm not going to do the whole photo, but I just roughly tell you all the steps. So like it's the same thing. Like you just pick the color here, and then it's pain, and then I pain and everything like that. Okay, this is the first step that you can do to paint the whole thing to remove all this 
color noise or anything from the photo. But sometimes it's when you're lucky, right? You see this part is really quite smooth. It's quite nice. And then we want to have to paint another thing is the bevel and then the highlights of the objects. So like you choose a, just a normal brush. I tend to like just turn off this shape dynamic. So it's a very really solid round brush. Hard edges. And then this is a brush mode. Okay, before that, right, I just, I think I made a mistake. I play directly in this building layer. So it's a bit risky, so let's just add another layer. Go in. You can paint directly here, but I don't suggest you do that because if you make mistake, then it's very hard to remove. So the brush, right, I use a round brush. Let's turn off this one. It's a hard edges brush. I don't know if you can see or not. So for eraser, I choose a soft edges A brush. Okay, now I'm just going to show you this step. Okay, for this step, right, I want to re-add the bevel line. If you see here, right, you will see a bit of like you see right, the highlights of the line. So we want to reintroduce, like make it much more obvious. Like you can just like, pick this color. And then like, you click here, right? You press shift. When you press shift right, you will draw a straight line, shift. Okay. So you have this much more clearer line. Right? So like, you can, I mean like, what I'm doing here right, is like, I draw a line and then you use eraser, it's just like remove. So like, it's sort of like a gradient of this line. So here is a bit not clear, let's just re-add this bit. I think it's not very really straight, so I cannot do the whole thing at once. So one is like a bit here. Can't really see that. It's like it's here, here. It's a bit weird, so I want to remove a bit. Use the eraser to remove it. Here's okay. The shadow, I think, also we can do a bit. Let's choose this color and then let's just make it much more straight. Okay, we'll use the opacity. Okay. See, I keep on adding layer and then I merge now. When I'm happy with the result, right, I merge now. So it's the same thing. You just repeat like painting and then like, adding this beaver line or the, or the whole thing. So here is like, we don't even like need to like think of like what color to change or anything like that because the color is already on the photo itself. But before that, right, we obviously need to increase the vibrance and then do some color adjustment, which I will explain later in another example. So here, I think we can use this color right now. Right now, we can for environment art, do you mostly just have like photos and pictures of like environment, then you keep painting it to make it look more like the yeah. animate artist? That's yeah, how yeah. almost all environment art works. It's never like no, trying to. Like, yeah. Some actually, some people, I mean, like a lot of good people, right? They have this very good fundamental, and then they have, they can draw all, all this perspective grid, everything like that nicely. They, they don't even use what. This step is like this one is like for people that never learn how to do the grid perspective thing, and then for people that want to do finish their job faster, I think. And then, so do you a, do more towards this kind of like, yeah, is this I, like oh, oh, okay. I do more to this kind and three D if because photo right, when we talk about photo we, I mean like in animation you might have location that is impossible to take photo. So in, in, in that case, I will use, I will do a 3D modeling and then I will render that 3D, render it into a very simple 3D and then paint over the 3D, which is the process is the same, like adding this bevel line, putting the sky and then putting the trees, everything like that. I mean, like now, even though we didn't do a lot of adjustments, it's really quite different, I guess. There is a few places which is here, it's not too, too nice. Okay. So you, the other thing here, I think we can do is maybe we can just like quickly. Um, 
Any other question before I move to another area, the painting of the... Yeah, yeah. I use Blender 3D, which is free. If you don't have any 3D software, how do you do want to purchase any, I mean, like purchase, use your money, right? You just go to here, Blender 3D, it's free. And it's quite simple to use. You can just download, there's two major version. 2.8 is the latest one, which I can show you. Let's just quickly, there's two major version, 2.8 and 2.79. 2.8 is supposedly the latest and then the interface is a bit different and then they have this different type of render engine which is I think the real time they call it the real time render engine. Sorry for sidetrack a bit, but I'm just going to show you quickly. Mm, no problem. Okay, this this one is the stuff that I did for Comic Fiesta. So I think the rendering might be just wait a bit. He need to compile the shader. I think you see here, right? I don't know how long it's going to take. Okay, you can see it already. Oh, lagging. <laughs> right, while we're waiting, uh, I got a question. Mm. Um, how long does it take you to make um something like this in Blender, actually? Yeah, I think I can show. Because I think the Photoshop part is already, the process is really quite clear, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean like remove background and then paint the clouds and then painting how do we paint over the photo is like we just alternate and then paint and then adding the beaver so maybe i will show the 3d part but let's just just a bit more 67 percent we can preview the whole thing here <laughs> we can sorry okay oh. this, i haven't finished yet but 2.8 supposedly you need a better graphic card and then you can do this real time preview. Uh, it's like roughly good thing about Blender is like when I say why I use 3D, right? Because when doing this background for Comet Fiesta, the countdown, countdown, right? 100, 100 days countdown. How, how do I find this photo with it? Because it doesn't exist in real world. So I have to model it or at least download some model that can be freely used. For example, oh no, okay. For example, okay. I don't model everything. For example, I think. The thing that I download is this office chair, which look quite nice. And the rest, a lot of stuff is my own model, like everything here. Wow. Oh, wait, when you, download, the... when you download all these stuff, right, it's all free, right? The one that I download, I make sure it's in public domain, and then I can use it for free. You mm -hmm. have to make sure that I should send. Because sometimes Creative Commons license, you say you cannot use for like commercial, or you have to put their attribution. You have to put their name when you use the workload. So like here actually is a lot of my own work la, except except this office chair la, which I really lazy the model. So like why I think 3D is much more better than Toto sometimes like I can just move around and then like I can just render this image. See you said. So mm. this is one of the scenes that <clears throat> just a bicycle in a room. What? Yeah. yeah. I mean uh, of I course. Model what if I you model need to like ride your bicycle somewhere? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very weird room without anything else because the render is this angle, right? So it doesn't put anything behind. So this is 2.8 with the real time preview. The 2.79 is roughly same. So you can download both version and try 2.79. Two points. This one is without the real time preview. So Uh, cannot read the oh, I think yeah, it's my power. Okay. Yeah, this one is just some it's much more I think it's if you have older GPU you can use this version. Okay. Okay, let's go back to Photoshop a bit. Okay, what else? This one again. Okay. Yeah, here is obviously the window is a bit photo like, it's still photo like. So, I mean, like for reflective surface, right? Sometimes what we can do is 
just for my add another layer. Maybe just quickly select this part. Because we didn't do color grading, so if we do color grading or this window might be a, be appear a bit blue. So like maybe you can just add uh, this blue. Click brush let's do this color. Put it here. Change the blending one and see. Okay. I think it looks slightly better instead of like You just continue. Let's just put for all the window. Okay, here. So we can just merge all this layer and then here's a I have to remove that part first. And obviously here I have to remove that as well. Okay, I think with this tint of color it looks slightly better. I don't know about everyone, but I think it looks slightly better with this team. Let's just maybe just um, just apply to this layer. Okay, before that, I want to duplicate this layer first. I want to use this color as a mask for reflection, so I just leave it here before here. Okay, so now I have. Let me turn off everything. I have this layer, which I can use for use as a clipping mask. So put it here. Maybe we can put a bit of like reflection of the cloud. Let's put a bit here. Right click. Mm. Can you see like we are adding the reflection like it could be one option so that okay let's go to it maybe put a tree here or something like that a small tree mm, can't remember which is Okay, let's use this one. It's a, I just use a leaf shape brush. That just now I show how to create a custom brush. Right? Can use maybe darker blue. <clears throat> Here. Then lock the layer transparency. You can use the same brush and then maybe here. Is you notice right the painting method is actually same with painting the cloud. I just like put another color and then maybe just match it here. Yes. Same but I think the color choice is not very good now. It's too dark. I think it's just not well. Let's 
add another layer for with paint. No, the basic idea is that I'm just going to stop now, not to keep on refining the tree. But maybe sometime we can have a machine. <clears throat> Looks sort of okay. Okay, now the other thing I want to add, sometime I do use this soft brush and then I Put a bit of like still down here. This one to show the distance uh, because for distance, right, the further away you have this air particle which make the I think it's called a very much more brighter. Okay. And our clouds like look so only here. Maybe add another layer in the background. I'm just going to use a brush that I use create from my own photo. I think this one. You see where it's right. Yes. Yeah, we have a bit of like texture in the background. Okay, okay. Well, one thing sometimes I did right is like this cloud, I just try to blur the whole thing. I duplicate this layer, this layer, I duplicate, and then I apply a Gaussian blur. So you can just like, just like the glow. Yeah, so it looks like glow, or you can just put it in the background. To you so you have a glow around that house so the whole process is basically like that how long we have been it's already one hour let me quickly like show other stuff for 3d right i think this one okay this one right is 3d i'm just going to explain it's the same thing that i did D. Okay, the three D. I think is this one. The render of the three D model is this. So the painting, right? Sometimes I don't even paint the sky. You know, is it? This one, I think I paint. It's based on the photo. Uh, I paste paint based on the photo. So like, I put sky color or thing like that. I think you will see this photo somewhere. Like, I can't remember where I see this photo. I like, so I try to recreate the thing. This one, the sky. It's the same. The sky color is a gradient, like this soft edge brush, which is this one. It's in the color, and then like here is a custom brush. And then this here, another cast, it's the same custom brush. This one, I think, is a painting, which I think I can just show you all quickly. To do stuff like this, right, you can actually. Uh, You can actually, like, let's say we just use this raw brush. You can actually just like paint some random shape. I'm not going to focus on the detail. Randomly like here. 
and then you sort of like control T and then like you will press we press control so like we can select one of the point so like so like you have you can adjust it to the perspective mode so like you can it's sort of like one quick way to do the cloud in perspective if you don't want to if you don't want to like place the thing manually okay here and then the next for this photo right the next is this one also a custom brush you see how many custom brush are used right people always like sometimes like they say oh custom you have to paint from circle brush custom brush is I mean, like you have to paint from a circle brush, like default brush. The custom brush is like not useful or anything like that. But for me, it's very useful. So like add the ground, and then like add a river or something like that. And then like the reflection, right, is a clipping mask for this river thing. So this cloud, right, is actually a painting on this. I just tweak it and then flip it. And then I add some kind of blur. So like you have this thing. And then you can just use a round brush to paint the glue. So this pylon, electric pylon, right, is a 3D. Lah. This one, I can't remember where, where is the photo reference, but it looks nice because I already have a reference. It's paint based on that. Lah. But the other two things, if you notice, right, I have this noise layer here. <coughs> I don't know if is this visible in the stream. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. I'm adding the noise back to this photo, so it's sort of like giving a very photo feel. I noticed in Big Sif, right, some artists, background artists, right, they tend to like re-adding this noise. So like maybe you can, sometimes you can do that also, it's depend on you. So how do you do this? It's like, you just go to filter, uh, noise, add noise. You have to fill it first, sorry. So you have this color noise. But one step I usually do right, I just kill it bigger first because I noticed the noise in the photo, right? They doesn't have this very tiny detail. The noise is quite big, the skill. So I just kill it big. And then I, I sort of like you can just use overlay mode. So like re-adding the noise. But I think I made a mistake just now because you know, I can just turn down the opacity. I usually start with the gray color. Though. So you have to choose some of a gray color, then you add the noise. The other thing is, it's actually a high pass filter. So you increase the sharpness. Do you see here, right? Let me zoom in a bit. Can you see the difference? I don't know if you can see or not, but to do this high pass filter, right? I don't know the new version of Photoshop do you have, can it done it manually, but usually you have to select everything and then duplicate them so you have a duplicate layer and then you control e i think if i'm not mistaken is filter but uh, i pass no i think you have to shift you is it yep you have to distract it first and then you have you will generate this layer so you see right it's a black and white gray skill image and then you change this blender mode, blending mode to overlay. So it's sort of like a sharpen, a, one way of to sharpen a photo. Okay, mm -hmm. So sometimes I did that, add the noise and then do this to sharpen the whole thing. So I don't, the sharpen effect, right? I don't disturb my layers because sometimes I might want to keep this layer unsharpened layers. Already. So I just use one overlay mode and then with the sharpen filter, so it's sharpener. So this one, I use 3D. Let's check. I have I have a lot of PSD, but I think okay. This one I think. Let's look at this one. This one obviously is from a photo I took. See, I didn't even paint the tree. I just like paint the sky and then like adjust the thing to uh breathe out, do cyan blue thing and then paint the sky. I think the sky, the sky is the same a gradient color and then like. I paint this and I add in this one I use color dodge mode I think so we sort of like add up at the star. The process is the same if you notice I just like crop the thing see crop the thing. This one I made some mistake because you see here it's a bit 
transparent, but doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the, logic, the end result. So it's the same thing. I mask them away and then I just sort of like paint. If you notice what I paint, right? Like what I say, just adding the blue line. Especially in area like this, because here, right, you see, right, this leaves and this, what is it called, the uh, toe, right? It's very similar to the values. So this, this one is sort of like separate them. Or the other thing I noticed is sometimes people, what other people did, right? They use this soft edge brush and then they add a bit of like this, maybe this color. They add a bit of like this color. So it's sort of like separate the two pieces so they do stick together. I think. You will notice in Makoto Shingai earlier anime, you will notice this thing a lot. Okay. Any questions so far? Because I think answering questions will help you all more. This one is also a 3D, I think. Maybe I can pass you all the empty layer so that you can try to do, do the painting. So this one is quite some time ago. It doesn't paint that much, I think. I just add a bit of like the bigger line again. Any questions? <laughs> mm. It's or hard to say because the way you present it makes it it's like easy to understand. You just get all these like pictures and stuff and you just paint through yeah, it to yeah. make it, it look looks nice. Easy, right? <laughs> yeah, it looks easy, but then when we when try you do, it, oh, yeah. It, I think you just have you just have to try it. It's a, I think it's a very good workflow for you everyone to try out. I mean on top of what you learn in Asterix, right? I'm sure you learn the proper way the academic and then what people how people do background like growing the perspective grid how to frame the thing much more interesting now i'm just showing you a, a very different method to do background quickly the thing you learn right like the perspective grid or you can use together what you i teach you like all this everything that you can combine sort of combine them together to find a workflow that is suitable for you Let's just check what I can show. Mm, how should I pass your order file? In Discord, I have some. In there. In there. Yeah, okay. Discord's uh, upload limit is eight, eight megabytes uh, and 50 megabytes with Nitro. So, or you could drive would be the best option. Uh. Yeah. yeah. I will pass the link in Discord. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank this you very one, much. I think I can give you all these flower photos. Too. If you remember, like Studio Ghibli have this. I think it's Totoro, right? This sunflower, so that you can try to recreate the thing. I try to recreate, but the result is not that good. But it's still okay. This one I'm lazy to paint, so I just use some filter. Mm. This was a photo. So it's the same method you see, right? I usually mask away and then I use 3D. Maybe let's check. Okay. Let's just show you this 3D. I have a photo version, but I didn't talk about that. One. So this one is 3D rendered. So like you can just like Photoshop. Sort of. This one is like quite a long time ago I did. Mm. Here it's like you see the 3D render I already put all the texture. This one I just add the background. So this one is a simple 3D and then Oof. wow. I didn't change the house that much, so like sort of. So still I, quite flat. I assume for this one, you just uh, or you just add tree, add clouds, change. Yeah, the yeah. A bit. yeah I think I didn't do much on the building. That's why the yeah, it's still not because the same. What, what I realized, which effect? Oh, you mean the drag? 
You want to put in your blog, is it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know. I guess I was thinking that in your workflow, right? It's yeah. like you put um your steps are kind of simple in that they put like mm. uh three D background and everything. Then yeah, after that, yeah. you just follow. You yeah. just change like four or five things, but you seem to execute it quite well. Yeah, yeah. you have to spend more time because just now when I'm doing that, this one right, is I'm rushing. That's why I didn't spend a lot of time. Like sometimes, I mean, like usually I also work quite fast. Like. I finish your background in one day, but I think mm. it's better that you spend more than one day to look because like maybe another day or you just revisit this painting again, you can see what can be improved, what mistake you've made. I think usually people did that. They look at the painting again with a, they call it a fresh eye or something like that. But I usually is very, I don't have that patience to like wait for a few days. I just like finish it. And then like, if it doesn't look nice, next time I will improve that. Uh. Mm, yeah. yeah. So these yeah. all these uh, take you about what about a day? Yeah. For I use, all my work is usually is in one day. Uh. But for mm. the 3D, right? In my, I mean, it's not including the 3D uh, because obviously the 3D you have to model everything and that. The painting, I mean, the Photoshop work is in a day. Uh. I see. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you to do the 3D thing? Actually? The 3D is depend on yeah. the complexity of the model, how many, how detailed the stuff, how many things is in. Okay, so let's in, say for example, like this train station thing. This how, one, I can't remember. Uh, could you give it? Yes, 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 yeah, yes. Maybe a few days even. A few, <laughs> okay. A few days. Yeah, this one is sort of still okay. Just now the one that I showed, right? The Comet Festa one. Yeah, yeah. The room one, that one is quite long. I think this nearly a week something like that yeah that would but, definitely take yeah. a week this one is pretty simple i think it doesn't maybe two three days mm. this one's because sometimes i've been doing 3d so i have this asset that i've been modeled so i just reduce so for example this one right this tower right, i modeled like quite long ago i just put it in here and then this background right, this all this building right is actually generated i doesn't even model them you can just like quickly Google how to like load this open source map I think I can't remember what is the word in Blender. So I like, My God, your skies are looking so beautiful all the time. Do you like paint so much skies that you're like yeah. a professional now when it comes to making skies? Uh no, I think someone could be better. Because I, I don't really get this result. Because I made a lot of painting, like sometimes I doesn't even upload them. When I feel that it's too bad. <laughs> ah, okay. But sky, I think okay about sky right. Sometimes beside using custom brush right, you can actually just take photo and then put it in the background. Right? You just take an evening photo. It's like you can just use your photo right? and then you just paint a bit in the sky. I think I did that sometime. Here. Okay. And regarding the layers, right, like why just now I mentioned why I separate them by elements, right? Because with doing that, right, when we import to After Effects, and then like this can be easily animate, can be animate easily, or right? so like let's say if I want to move, move the clouds, right, I already have these layers that I can just move. It wouldn't if you like you have a mess up layer, right? It's very hard to do animation, right? because I tend to try to do my own video or thing and then it's like so try to make it much more tidy videos. Okay, anything? Uh, yeah. Mm, nothing much. Let mm. me just open after if I see what I can show. Because now I'm using my office PC. I don't have a lot of files with me. I need to load my external hard drive. If you have any question, you can ask, but I'm mm. just trying to look for anything I can show you all in the effects.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. This one? Hmm. 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 Yo. Yo. Hmm. Uh, let me check. Huh? Look at that. It's very blur. I cannot really say what's... It could be he paint himself, you know, like, looks like a painting. But I can tell you all, like, which one is 3D. Let me check this one. Hmm. It looks like painting, but the layers is very... It's, if it's a photo, right, then he did a very good job of, like, painting over everything. Because if you see right here, even I like, add blur here, and then, but the cropping, it could be a photo also because you see right the crop, it seems like there is a cropping thing. It's like the edge is very hard, I think. So this one is a very nice painting, painted background. It's like if he did a nice job. But for... It could be, yeah, it could be a simple 3D structure and then he paint over. This one, he did a good, I mean, like, he already put a lot of effort like painting over if he's a 3D, but it could be also his 100% of painting. But for 3D, right, I can show you all, like, I'm sure everyone know that artist, right, the, what's it? The Russian artist, what is the name? Uh, what is the Russian artist? Huh? The background artist. Sometimes Pixiv have this as the main page. What is the guy? Mm. Yeah, what's his name? Huh? <laughs> Let me think of it. No, 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 it's very famous. I'm sure you've seen before. Uh, let me check. Did I follow him? The moment you say Russian, is like, eh, very familiar, but then I don't recall already. Oh, Ars, Ars, Arsenic or something. Arsenic. Arsenic? Arsenic. Arsenic C. Yeah, this guy. Oh, okay. Arsenic. This one, this guy is obviously 3D, but he really did a very good job. Man. You will see right, if you zoom in and zoom in. Oh, he didn't have high res. But if you look at his work, right, you can see the 3D in his work. Right? And then like sometimes you also mentioned like he used work together with another 3D artist or anything like that. But he the color the way he do the colors uh, is very nice and then it's even better than me. It's one of my reference when I start to do this method. Uh, like, but I don't suggest you contact him uh, because I think for people like him, it's very busy or thing like that. <laughs> yeah. See, it's really... Where is his interior? His interior, I think, is pretty nice. And so... Are those like 3D models he used? Yeah, use he or... used 3D models. He, he mentioned in some of the posts. Which also gives me another question. Do you also have like certain knowledge of knowing how to make 3D modeling with blenders. Let's say if you want to make these kind of environmental paintings and arts, sometimes you just create the structure all in like Blender 3D model. Yeah. Like just uh, now the model I show, right? It's actually yeah. I model most of the stuff. I only download one or two objects. Personally, uh, in Office, right, I use a lot of Blender. So uh, right, this guy, Asanik, right, this guy, he you can see right, it's very obvious it's a 3D thing, but the way he do colors is very nice. And then I think he used a lot of like overlay mode, the blending mode, right? He put a very warm color here and then set it to overlay. So it's sort of like yeah, this fading, right? This warm color to this, I think it's pink and purple or something like that. So he just, he used a lot of this overlay mode. You just look at his work. I think for 3D, right? This guy is one, one of the best uh, painting over 3D. For this one, I think, I don't know if you all can see the 3D or not. Like, for me, it's obvious uh, it's a bit of 3D. Mm, yeah. I think on the left very nice, uh, I think on the left and the right side not so, but the middle part does seem quite 3D. Uh. Yeah. Mm. But, but you can see the good part. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So if your painting doesn't look 3D, it does feel kind of weird. weird uh. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, but how do you how do you think he paints that the 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 tiles on the floor? The tiles, I think it could be a three D texture, and then like he he add the bevel line, like what I say, right? This guy is, I mean, like it's one of my reference and research when I start to do uh, if how to zoom in. Uh? Okay, zoom in. You will see right just now I mentioned about the bevel, right? See this one, the line is bright. Mm-hmm. You still have that thing, I think anime usually have. So I like, see this line, everything right, is everywhere. This line, see the line, bevel line, and this part, the you see right. Pay attention to the wall, right? We have this bump map, I think from the three D. Right? The tiles, I think it should be a uh, textures which is already rendered from the three D. Maybe you can just like add a bit of like painting. A bit of see, grass yeah. with the painting. Yeah. The chair I think it's yeah. very obvious that he draw this line, see? Re adding this line. No need to repaint everything then. This guy have yeah. very color sense. There's a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah, I think here you see he put a soft edge brush for this part. So like it's sort of like show the distance like bluish, a very cold color distance. The cloud looks so okay. I think cloud there is one very good tutorial in YouTube. I can't remember. It's from a Japan, so like, it, but it's rough. You know, it's like they draw the shape and then they smash the cloud for coloring. See the lines. Any artist that you want to look at, so we can discuss together how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. That's quite nice. Okay, let's go back here. What else can we? Let me check. I can't really find the file. Just wait for one minute. I think my external hard drive. Okay, this one I think is with one of I did with one of the lecturer one scene. I don't know it's it's not online right now. Yeah. He's actually quite a good he can actually paint background very nice also, but he's even excellent, much more excellent in animation, I guess 2D. So like this one is the stuff that he did. There was some file missing, but never mind. So any question you want to ask regarding, I, I mean, I, this one is off topic, but I can answer using After Effects, everything like that, which is what I actually did most in office during my office hour. I'm curious to know also, you say you were colorblind as well. So how would you exactly really know, like what color specifically are you blind? I'm a so red, green, color, my red, red and green. green. Yeah. You can oh. actually the test you can very easily test. So like oh. my it's not that I cannot see green, but I see lesser green and lesser red. Like for example, traffic light, right? The green for traffic light. I see it as white at that. Oh I don't see the green at all. I see white. But the grass green, right, as you see the green, everything like that, it's I guess it's more oh. less saturated. The colors I see is less saturated. So how do you like solve this problem because okay. I also have the same one with the colorblind one. Like I say just now right, the very first thing in this class I say just now right, if you are using Photoshop, change it to HSB slider. 
So with here, right, if you look at this slider, right, we already know the position of every color. Like when you put it here, right, this one is red, and then like yellow, green, blue, purple, and red. I won't make mistake by using this, like I know what is the color. But sometimes during painting, right, like let's say I have a let's say a, a blue very I mean like cyan blue color, right? And I want to put a yellowish gradient, right? I will still thought this one is like yellow, but it's actually when blue mixed with yellow, right, it becomes green. So I don't see the green, so it's actually a problem for me as well sometimes. So I think for starting out, you should use this HSB slider, like right? pick the color in this color swatch mode. Okay. Any question? You can ask me about after effects. Right? This one. Okay. Yes. It's a lot of the year. I think I have some missing files. Here. Yeah. The name like this one is a 3D. I just like rendered the 3D. The background also 3D. It's actually a 3D. I just do the painting. You could make be able to see the 3Dness here. I think it's like, the grass is a pain on top of it. So it's a very short animation. See what I Yeah, the animation right that like usually you do all the animation and then you export i can't remember the format is it should be a mov or swf check this one is quite over time or oh, image frequency or i think he passed me a image sequence yep. Yeah, for this one, right? For this one, right? He actually, because I think that time he just came back from US and then he won, he's free. So, but he also want to do some animation for his portfolio, right? So, he just asked me like, whether I'm free to do some very tiny animation. Like, so I say, okay. So, the first thing, right? He's, we just discussed about a very rough idea about the Then we just came up with this idea that a girl just sitting on the bus stop like waiting and then like sort of like interact like walking around this one scene just one scene so the first thing first right i pass him is actually just this very a guide it's a very simple model not this detail it's, i think it's very rough so like he can do do the rough animation based on this bus stop everything like that i pass him that first before i adding all the details painting the background so he will he will sketch the thing i think sketch and then do the animation he will he'll show me like the progress like maybe this girl everything like that so after that we can just like okay the other thing i want to mention is because this you see right there is a shadow on this character yes we already discussed uh, so maybe we don't want to cast shadow on the floor so maybe we just cast the shadow i mean it's it's not logic i think in during afternoon the shadow the angle is like that but we just decide to do that so he asked me to do the shadow on the bus stop also like see the half like that it's the same as the character is pre discusser. So it's like okay, anything you can answer a question. Huh. Don't no need to show eh? anything as a can. Let's just open another file you can see that thing. Do you think like your environment art improves a lot because you also have the knowledge to also implement 3D like environment and backgrounds mm. into it? Okay. So like mm. it's kind of like an advantage, like you just show one to us that most environmental artists sometimes aside from taking pictures, they also would take like 3D like mm. 
Yeah, and I wonder also, like, let's say if I don't have that knowledge at all to know how to use Blender and stuff, and I'm trying to create these same kind of things that you guys are making, would it just mean that I need to put in a lot more work when it comes to um, structuring these kind of things? Uh, you actually have to find out a workflow of your own way. It's not that who is better or what, but I think in terms of like my background, right, I'm very really sure that I'm not the best background artist. Like just now, right, we look at the pixie frame. It's obviously that guy is better than me, the color sense, everything. But my strength, right, why do I do so many things? Because I believe that is my strength. You can see, right, I do 3D and then I use photo and then I can import this to after it like to animate. This one is my strength because I think what will make me difference compared with different background artists. Like they can paint really nice background, but I can I can animate them, which is my strength. So I'm really sure that you doesn't need all the knowledge to do a really nice painting. You can just like focus on one area. But for me is because I'm okay, before everything else, right? I'm not even a art graduate, I'm an IT graduate, I'm a programmer. So I was working as a programmer for a few years before I start doing all this creative work and then I slowly pick up everything myself. Because I've been like I mean like I like painting since young, so like I'm trying to do something I like for myself. But don't worry, it's like you can definitely can just use I mean I like just use painting, right? You can just improve yourself with just like one painting software. You don't need to learn 3D or anything like that. It's an added skill scale of value. You can explore, it's like, I always suggest everyone to explore. You might like it, maybe who say like, maybe you like 3D in the end, and then like, you can put it in your workflow. There is a lot of like different way to do something. But it's, for example, like, I know 3D and then I know compositing. After I do my background, like, I can do animation and then upload to YouTube. It's, it's very, the feeling is very fun and rewarding like, when someone Okay, so for this one, right? Just now you say the sky is nice, right? This one, the sky is actually just a photo. I don't, I don't even want to paint this detail sky. It's possible, but I just put it in and then I see. Okay, this one is paint, like obviously. The painting is I only do one painting, but I use After Effect to readjust the color and then I load different sky for the image and everything like that. And then the birds is a one animation and then I use a particle system to like, to like multiply, multiply them a lot. Okay. Any question? You can actually just use photo, like this one is photo. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie, like sometimes I just paste the photo in there. The building is still it's actually a photo. I just readjust a bit, like change the value and then color see, and then I add a bit blur. The foreground here, this one, the path is a three D. The grass is two D. This one is two D, and then this thing, the island thing, is three D. The character, because I'm not the. Uh, animator right? so it's actually a puppet animation so i draw the character and split it in different parts i just like rotate them it looks kind of okay right? the animation okay anything else mm. yeah yep yeah, I will, I will paste the download link in the corner. Right, I think it's you. hard to ask questions because in the end, we all need to try and do this ourselves. And then that's the moment when we can really... Yeah, you like, can ask me yeah. later after you try, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. I'm still, I believe I will be still in this channel where you can just paste your question here and then I mention me so I can come back. Okay, thank you everyone.
Thank you very much, Sensei. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for. <laughs> <sighs>